Amen. Amen. Bet you all don't know what I'm preaching on today, huh? We have our youngsters up here. They are working on a project and they need to get they need to get going. Right on. Well, Father, we thank you for the blessings that you bestow upon us and these young ones that you've given us. You're never too late. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for the teachers, Father, the instructors, instructors that you've put in their paths, Father God, and, and Lord, just allow them to glorify you in all that they do and learn. your word, your purpose, your commands, and your promises in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I was never that excited to go to Sunday school. <laughs> Hallelujah. Everyone get that hand out this morning. Everyone get that. That. Uh, it, it's a uh, uh -oh. turn with me to Hebrews chapter 6 this morning Father God I just praise you and I thank you for your purpose and your will for this body of believers Lord God and I ask in Jesus name that your blessings be on us and upon us we give you praise. Amen. Amen. I'm going to speak to you this morning about anchors. And that pen that was given to you is a reminder of Jesus Christ. He who holds. He who is the anchor. Hebrews 6, beginning at verse 13. And I'm going to read from my message Bible this morning. When God made his promise to Abraham, he backed it to the hilt, putting his own reputation on the line. He said, I promise that I'll bless you with everything I have. Bless and bless and bless. <clears throat> Abraham stuck it out and got everything that had been promised to him. When people make promises, they guarantee them by appeal to some authority above them, so that if there is any question that they'll make good on the promise, that authority will back them up. When God wanted to guarantee his promises, he gave his word, a rock-solid guarantee. God can't break his word. And because his word cannot change, the promise is likewise unchangeable. We, who have run for our very lives to God, have every reason to grab the promised hope with both hands and never let go. It's an unbreakable spiritual lifeline, reaching past all appearances, right to the very presence of God, where Jesus running on ahead of us, has taken up his permanent post as high priest for us in the order of Melchizedek. I want to welcome you all here this morning. Those of you watching us online, thank you for being with us. We praise you, Father, and we thank you, Jesus, for the words that you've given us. Verse 19 says, it is an unbreakable. Everybody say unbreakable. It is an unbreakable spiritual lifeline reaching past all appearances right to the very presence of God. I am anchored in Jesus Christ this morning. Are you? Ah, are you? Are you? Psalms 9, 9 in the Amplified says, The Lord also will be a refuge and a high tower for the oppressed 
a refuge and a stronghold in times of trouble, high cost, destitution, and desperation. Do we agree with that this morning? We agree with that? There have been a lot of trials in my short life. A lot of trials. I've been through a lot of tests. Passed a few. Failed a few. I know all of us here can say the same thing to one degree or another, no matter our age. Amen? It's what more than one author has described as traveling through this ocean of life. We're all on it. All of us. We're plotting our course to heaven's shores. Studying the word of God, trying to build our spirit man. Sometimes it's smooth sailing. Sometimes it's rough. Sometimes it's rough. Sometimes it's even looking at the stars and trying to calculate our course and having no idea where we're at, nor where we're going. One day, the, one day the, the gale winds are blowing, beating against our ship, and the next, the water's so calm, it invites us to walk on it. So beautiful the day that we feel we can do anything, conquer anything. The only thing certain outside of Jesus Christ is uncertainty. You can write that down. That's really good. The only certain certainty outside of Jesus Christ is the uncertainty. Now, I don't know where you are on this ocean of yours. Why, why we're here. Where we are here. Where are we going What's behind us? How are we doing? But I don't want us to be this morning, I don't want us to be at the mercy of the sea. Amen? At, at the mercy of the ocean that fights against us. Adrift on the ocean without an anchor to hold us in troubled times. An anchor to hold us when we, when we can't fill our sails. We can't get our sails lifted to prevent us from losing ground that we've already taken. How often we have to, one, one guy said, back up and push. How often we have to, we have to fall back and regain ground that, that we have taken perhaps years before and had an enemy force us back and push us back because we weren't solidly tied to the rock to hold our position, to be anchored. Amen? So I don't want us to be there. There's a lot of folks who just drift along, just drift along the ocean and don't know where I am, where I'm going. Bow up. Stern now. Starboard port side. You know, my, my dad was was in the Navy during the war in the, in the Philippines on a destroyer, and he said they would face those typhoons, those storms. And he said all they could do was close every hole on that boat and bob. He said, I never saw so many sick 19-year-olds in my life. He said it would be up and down and up and over and up. Some of us are are like that on on our journey. Just bobbing along. Don't know where we're going to wind up, but one day the storm will break and we'll We'll open our eyes and pop the hatch and and wonder, where am I? How did I get here? What happened to my course? Do I have to replot? With with no security and nothing to hang on to and nothing to draw strength from, nothing to bring us peace, nothing to keep us steadfast in troubled waters, 
we won't stay the course. So often we hear that, stay the course. Well, to stay the course, you got to stay the course. And we can't allow ourselves to be blown to the left and to the right. By winds of misfortune, by, by turbulation, by tides in and out. We can't afford it, and we certainly can't afford it today. Everything that we have gained, we need to own. God is fond of saying, where you put your foot, I've given you. You know, if, if that's true, then we have gained ground, and we have to hold on to it. We don't have time to back up. We don't have time to turn it loose. I found my anchor. I found it on the floor of my living room one night in 1987. I didn't know what I found, but I knew I found something that was Christ Jesus. I knew I found something that would never change. I found something that was solid, something that would always be there. Couldn't describe it to you, but I owned it. Do you remember the day? Think about your own life. Remember the day that you gave your life to Jesus Christ, and did you not sense the hold? I'm telling you, what a beautiful, wonderful thing God speaks to us and does within us when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Thank you, Denny. Thank you for asking this morning. Make sure. We, we don't want anyone here to not know safety and the sanctuary that we have in Christ Jesus, the salvation that's ours in Him. I found something immovable, unshakable, something permanent. What once was the rope, the end of my rope, had instantly turned around and no longer was it slipping through my fingers. In an instant, it became a rope that was attached to Christ gave me something that I could depend on. Have the winds come? Yeah. Have the hurricanes blown? Yeah. Have the typhoons hit? Yes. Yes. How many times? A bunch. And yet here I am. Here we are. Why? Because something has kept you. Or you wouldn't be here. Something calls to you or you wouldn't be here. The voice of God in your life. God wants to remind us this morning of his sureness, of his safety, of his protection. Amen? Amen, I'll tell you what. All those trials and all those tests, the anchor holds. This song has been beating me up all week. I love it. I love it. I love it. I, I read and listen to his words, and I'm going, yeah, Ray, I don't know where you got this thing. Man, it holds. Phew. My anchor remains steadfast. We're, we're not supposed to be anchored to things that move. Amen? We're not supposed to be anchored to the things that move. Living high, anchored in the sand, anchored in money. We're to be anchored in Christ and Him alone. Every once in a while, we've got we've to check and make sure we're, we're still anchored. Make sure we're still tied to the one who holds. 
we find ourselves drifting and 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 grab our bible and 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 it's it's been sitting there <laughs> you got to blow the the dust off it and found out well I'm not where I was when I set this thing down then we've got to ask ourselves have I been secure and have I been tied and and have I been striving unto the Lord your life will tell you we're supposed to be anchored in Christ who who never moves who never sways who is always there father god our father god he said he said behold my servant in isaiah chapter 42 he said behold look at my man behold my servant whom i uphold he's my elect one the one in whom my soul delights can you imagine the one in whom my soul delights. I put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the Gentiles. He, that he, that Jesus. It's he who keeps. It's he who keeps. No one else. And someone might say, well, what if you lose, what if you lose hold of the rope? Good question. But you see, that's just it. We can't lose hold of the rope if we're held on to it by God himself. We can't hold in our own strength, but we have to decide to hold on. I decide to hold on to Jesus. It's a decision I and you must make in our hearts that I am holding on to my Christ, my Messiah, my Lord, and I am not going to let go. And the minute you claim that, and the minute you, you grab hold of that, then all of the power of God and all of heaven is yours to cause you to hold. Amen. We would all turn loose were it not for Christ in us. He's the one. He is not not only the anchor, he is not only the rock, the rock of all ages, he is not only the steadfast one, he's the rope in our hands and everything else. But we've got to want it. We've got to desire it. It's our own decision that matters. As long as we choose to hold on to him, he will hold on to us. But nothing's going to be taken from his hand. Why? Because he's holding on. Are we? Are we holding on this morning? Call on the one who saves. Call on the rock of your salvation. Call on Christ who is your anchor. My sister never lost I did not. Hold that up close. I said, no, I did not ever lose hope. Um, October the 18th, my son lived, uh, received a liver transplant. He was hours away from death. We received two, he received two liver transplant donors that were not viable on Tuesday and by Saturday. His liver was working at 3% and his kidneys were working at 5%. And God healed him. He brought him a liver. He is today watching his son in Kansas be given an award for the championship of the USA for the, dog, uh, the Bird Dog Association. Four months later. Uh, so many miracles, it would take me hours to share. But the one thing that, as, as we were in San Francisco and we were waiting daily, and the two livers had come and weren't viable, and then we went from Tuesday till Saturday, and my daughter was losing hope. 
because he was getting weaker and she said he's not going to get one and I, I just rebuked it. I said, I, I, I rebuke that. He's going to get a liver. And five hours later, that liver was there. And he got it the next morning. And they told us when we brought him home that they always have to return for a tune-up. He hasn't been back, folks. He's a walking miracle. Amen. Amen. Does the liver always come? No. Amazing. And yet, the anchor held. Amen. Amen. You know, it's our decision that matters. You can decide to give up and decide to hold on. We can lose trust, lose faith. The decision is ours. As long as we choose to hold to him again, he will hold to us. And no power on earth and no power in hell can loose your grip to remain steadfast in Christ. You may be facing situations right now. I don't know. It might look hopeless, but I'm telling you this morning, I'm trying to encourage us this morning. I'm trying to say whatever situation you may be in, hold on. Hold on. Call on him who saves. Lose hope in the rock of your salvation. Listen, I gave all of you that anchor pin this morning. I gave that to you as a reminder to you of the strength of him who holds. Remind us of the strength that is ours in Christ Jesus. There is absolute security in Christ. And we have done a pretty poor job of witnessing to the world the security that we have in Christ Jesus. The world is not going to come to an end if gas is $5 a gallon. It, the world is not coming to an end. We allow so many storms to push us and to test us and to try to drive us away. That we must, people must begin walking in the assuredness of Christ Jesus. We're either His or we are not. He either cares for us or he does not. We're either holding to the anchor or we are not. Well, I've given that to you as a, as a sign, as a reminder. Christ himself, because I found something out. That anchor that, that is, is that pin, that anchor that I gave to you this morning. That is a kedge anchor. Anyone heard of that before? Maybe a few. It, it, it's, a, it's a kedge anchor. I didn't know. I started looking. You know how many anchors there are? There's mushrooms. There's, there's, there's sacks. There's, there's parachutes. There, oh, my gosh. That is a kedge anchor, to my, to my knowledge. I didn't know what it is, but here's the deal. It's used in a lot of different ways, comes in a lot of different sizes. But it's used when a ship becomes stuck. 
when a ship becomes high centered on a sandbar or or hits bottom because the water has drawn out defeated the tide has gone out and that anchor is taken by a dinghy not the sailor and they take it out as far as they can and they drop the kid and then they come back to the ship and using a winch or all sailors on deck they pull until that kedge binds and then they begin to pull their ship off the sand into the deeper water or off of the rock that they're high centered on is that making any sense to you now amen amen you may be drifting you may be stuck on the sandbar of life amen i tell you what use the kedge use the kedge pull on its security and allow yourself to draw back to Christ he's not going to move away from you tied to the anchor of all anchors this morning if you haven't if you haven't secured yourself to Christ maybe you say well I've given my life to Christ but if you have not secured yourself to Christ it might be time this morning to drop anchor it might be time it might be time for you Jesus is the anchor of every believer every christian and he holds <laughs> the anchor holds i want to tell you this morning the winds are going to blow the storm I want to tell you right now the storm door is open. The storms are going to come. And it will never be as important to us than right now to make sure that our security is in Christ. It's not in my finances. The world isn't going to end if they stop social security. It's not it's not the world isn't going to end because nbc abc nbc and cbn nr2 d2 says it's going to end our security is in christ even though our faith might be small his strength sustains us amen his faith he carries us through. He causes us to finish the race. How many of us want to finish this race? You know? I mean, come on, all you quitters, raise your hand. <laughs> uh, I'm telling you. I'm going to ask them to to play Ray Bolts's song again for us. Um as we close um, and as I do if you need prayer this morning I'm, I'm, I'm gonna invite you to the altar and we'll pray with you if you need prayer this morning I want you to come and get it I'm asking that you come forward and, and receive the mercy and the love the healing that's offered us in Christ Jesus the security that's ours that secure connection if you need that this morning, as we play this, the altar is open for you. I had journeyed through the long dark. I 
praying, and, and you all are blessed. You can you can leave as you will, um, but please maintain your your quietness as we continue praying. Okay. God bless you, everyone. Give somebody some sugar before you get out of here. I mean it.